Hi, and welcome to another exciting Pirate News, where we are not live, but we're coming to you from Lowell. Uh, we actually have a space where we can sit. Maybe we can put a couch back there at some point. Maybe. Maybe. I've got a couch. I, let me guess, I have to go get it. Yeah, someone would have to, yeah. Yeah, someone would have to go get it. But it's a sleeper couch as, as long as someone fixes the, the leak. <laughs> I, you know, so. this, this is a place where uh, it's an industrial park, so we're not really allowed to sleep here. But, um, so nix that. Yeah, th yeah, this is not a place you want to rest your head. I'm sure the ghosts will get you. Mm -hmm. But uh, we uh, have some exciting things that we want to talk to you about tonight. Uh, mainly, there's a lot of rumors right now about Executive Order 14067. And that is the government specifically going after cryptocurrency. Now, as it stands right now, they can come in and just stop your commercial banks, like your Bank of America, Citizens Bank, or TD Bank, what have you. Uh, but they want to be able to reach you wherever your money is, because government loves your money. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the title. It, uh, it's ensuring responsible development of, of digital assets, and the I'm one of you two should do the do the exploit. I, I should let one of you two do the do the background, and I'll just um, I'll, I'll just uh, throw throw shells from the peanut gallery. Um, so I'm not a hundred percent educated on this myself, but I, this is basically the one that I've been following, and from what I understand. Uh, the government wants to be able to just shut off your money if you're a criminal and all the laundry list of things that they're saying that the reason why they're doing it is the same stuff for like trafficking, for criminals, for money laundering. Um, but they don't seem to understand that just regular people don't want them touching their money. One of the things I, I, I actually like to do a lot of stuff with cash. And I mean, there are two reasons. One is, is money management. When your pocket is empty, you're broke. <laughs> uh, number two is just that, um, you know, I am conscious of the fact that, you know, if you're using a, a, a payment card, a credit card, a debit card, every time, uh, you know, if you use that to buy all, to, you know, buy all of your things, there's, there's, you're, sort of doing two things. One is you're giving your credit card issuer a very good picture of your purchasing habits, where you go, when you, and when you go. Uh, the second is you're doing a similar thing on the retailer side where they can look at what, your purchase, what you've purchased over time. This is the Walmart knows you're pregnant before you do kind of uh, scenario. So yeah, I, 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 I do like cash. Um, you know, I don't keep Hordes of it stuffed in a in a mattress. You know, I'll I'll go to the ATM machine once a week or however however often I need to. But um, I, I could, do like the anonymity. I could see you as a dragon with hordes of just gold all around. <laughs> <laughs> just doubloons. I think we need a doubloon society. I, you know, we could just have our own currency, the pirate currency of doubloons. Except, unfortunately, there's already a pirate coin. So, oh. you know, and it's not run by us. So what is the, so the idea is to have a sort of a digital form of currency. Is that, is that basically so, it? So the government is basically, I think what this order is, they're just trying to make their own digital currency and make it so that you can only use theirs. It's not going to be like a cryptocurrency, is it? Like a, a electron ask. electricity sucking <laughs> the heat. <laughs> Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, I mean, the whole cryptocurrency thing, um, one of the outcomes of that was this really cool, you know, the idea of the public distributed ledger, you know, the whole blockchain idea. It, it's very useful and it solves, um, you know, some some difficult distributed systems problems with attribution, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But boy, you, it takes a lot of energy to figure out what those magic numbers are to, to you know, actually instantiate the currency. I mean, what, yes. Um, it, it strikes me that this executive order, and we've seen various things occurring 
uh, from the Congress as well. Mm -hmm. um, although they have talked about putting in privacy protections so that you can't just, uh, I mean, my, my understanding is this is supposed to be a digital version of cash. Mm -hmm. And that at least from, I think, um, Marty Meehan, I, I think, uh, did that. Um, so that's laudable. It would be nice to be able to take the credit card companies and the banks out of the equation. Whether you want the government to be there, I, I'm not keen on that. But it, you know, if 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 they can set it up so that it can be private, so, great. So, but I'd rather just, you know, <laughs> cash is good. I was going to say that's a whole new meaning to the phrase Bank of America. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, when it really comes down to it, do you really want a government agency in control of your money? I mean, they sort I Regulate, okay. Try and make sure it's as balanced as possible, but even that's outsourced because, you know, they're, they do a great job in some, in some other cases. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, as far as I knew, the IRS is really running a tight ship. Yeah, I mean they aren't doing that tight because Jeff Bezos spend you know Jeff Bezos' tax tax rates are like way less than the three of us as a percentage of our income, right? Bezos and Musk and all the rest of those billionaires who have have, have their uh, have have ways of hiding money. So I'd rather they go after those ways because those are legal then worry about digital currency. I mean, I was just being slightly facetious. Aren't we always? <laughs> Aren't we always? Uh, so really what it comes down to is just another case where the government's trying to step in and exercise control in a situation where, you know, generally the free markets do better with, with balancing itself out. Generally, not Whoa. always, not always, not always. You know, it, it depends on how much regulatory capture the free market tends to, manages to accomplish, because that, that makes, a, makes a slight difference. <laughs> I mean, I'll just point out the Fed already runs a digital currency for the banks. So if this opened it up to everyone, maybe that's not that bad, okay. that's about a thing. Uh, I mean, certainly we could have a state bank mm -hmm. uh, that would compete and would likely have lower rates than the existing banks that we have now, and there are a few of those there, so that would be a good thing. Well, we could make sure that that money that we as citizens put into it actually goes towards useful things, not shuffling money around to you know back a hedge fund or some other Wall Street bankster. Yeah, like Nancy Pelosi and stock markets? I mean, you know, you just got to look at her husband, right? And his financial background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. State banks, state banks. And on the topic of, uh, of a certain billionaire, uh, Bezos, you know, I mean... Amazon, weren't they at this point considered a monopoly, seeing that they kind of just strung everything together? Aren't there laws against what Bezos has done? I mean, there's still Walmart, right? Or, or, the, or the merger between, what, what is it, Kroger's and Stop, mm -hmm. not Stop and Shop, it's it, Star it's, Shaw's, Kroger's. It, it's two, super, two big supermarkets. Right. You know, where Walmart has 25% of all retail sales and combined these mm -hmm. two companies would have 13% of, of all of it. Why don't we just break up Walmart? Yes. Well, I think with Amazon, I think that one of the issues isn't just the size of them, but they run an e-commerce program platform that sells uh, their own goods. They also run it as a marketplace for other people to... Um, you know, sell their, to, to sell stuff. And when you have a situation like that, there is, you know, there is the risk that the person who's got the platform can kind of 
tilt the scales in their favor. Um, you know, if they, if Amazon noticed one of their independent retailers selling something that was quite popular, what's to stop Amazon from knocking it off and, you know, making the same thing and favoring their own offerings when someone goes to search for the, you know, the widget or whatnot? Pretty sure they already do that. <laughs> but the thing with Walmart, and that you brought it up, is that they are the ones who are setting the price to the manufacturers. And they have a long history of doing that. So that is 100% a scalping type scenario. Yeah, I mean, Amazon does that as well. I mean, Cory Doctorow has written extensively about how Amazon will go and say, okay, you gotta give us, A, you have to have the same price, um, and B, you gotta give us the best deal. So in essence, what we are doing is when you buy from another non-Amazon retailer, you're subsidizing Amazon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, these, the, these policies are exactly why we're anti-corporation. This is, we need to make sure that these big conglomerates aren't just destroying all the mom and pop shops like I remember happening when Walmart rolled through. Yeah, so I don't, I, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself anti-corporation. I think corporations have a useful place. Well, you know, but I, I don't like monopolies. I don't like big megacorps. Uh, so when I say <laughs> anti-corporation, I mean towns are considered corporations. I'm not, right. I'm not, the concept of corporations are good and true. Mm -hmm. It's that corporate veil that I really speak to. It's right. That, it's that shield that you get that from like Monsanto, like where they got shielded from their decisions that they made, which affected how many lives? Lots. And then to be able to go out and sue the farmers for the stuff that they couldn't even control. Right, right, right. You know, so I mean, it's like life finds a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. I mean, we just look at Purdue Pharma. So on that note, um, vote pirate, vote often, or not often, but uh, we have some local run news. Pirate run. Yeah, we have some local news. Yeah, it goes to you. So yeah, uh, local news. I'm going to give a, um, you know, this is where we've started talking about big federal stuff. We're going to talk about really small local stuff. Um, how small? Uh, 900 square feet or less to be precise according to you know, Massachusetts state law definitions. But we're talking about accessory dwelling units, otherwise known as in-law flats, granny apartments, et cetera. It's basically you have a house and you um, are, and what you can either like carve out a part of that, put in a, like a separate kitchen, separate bathroom, separate entrance, and you know, rent it out um, you know, or have a relative live there or have an in-home caretaker live there. It's, um, it's a reasonable way to add small apartments, um, you know, housing stock, which we pretty desperately need in Eastern Mass, well, not just Eastern Massachusetts, all over the place right now. Um, you know, they're not cheap, but they're, they're very cost effective. Now, the challenge with ADUs, um, as they're called, is that, well, in a lot of communities, they don't allow them. And bit by bit, some are, um, now, some communities are considering legalizing this as an option. Uh, Arlington, the community I'm from, we legalized it in 2021. Um, and just literally last month, our first per one was permitted. Um, so it's, new ideas take time to catch on, but it's, you know, there's, it's one of these things where you suggest you make the suggestion and everybody's immediately afraid that, oh, well, we're just going to have, the population will double overnight and it doesn't do that. But anyway, uh, later on in the week, I will be um, in Winchester, Winchester uh, town to, town to uh, our north, I think, my north, anyway. They are going to be considering uh, accessory dwelling units um, you know, in a special town meeting in November. And uh, their planning department has organized a panel discussion to sort of have people talk about them, relate their experiences. I'll 
you know, my role will be to talk about how um, ADUs came to, you know, our AD Arlington came to pass an ADU bylaw. But um, I'm looking forward to uh, looking for the conver looking forward to, co to the conversation, and I'm also looking forward to more municipalities um, allowing AD accessory dwelling units. Now, on, on that note, you said it's kind of new since 2021, right? Mm -hmm. And you're just now having your first one? Just having the first one. So you're hoping for more to get through, and that's to alleviate the, the housing tension, correct? Yes, and I mean, one of, yeah, so an accessory dwelling unit is not an inexpensive thing to do. Um, you're looking probably at 100, $150,000 to $200,000 in construction costs. Um, and it's going to take a homeowner, you know, in our case, we require the, what, in order to get the, act, the building permit to construct the ADU, the, you know, homeowner has to live in one of the two, will have to live in one of the two after it's built. But yes, we are hoping to get more of them. Um, in this, per, in, the, in the first one that we permitted, the, I believe it was a family that had been living in town for several decades and they wanted to downsize in order to age in place. So they're building an ADU and they will move into it and they will rent out the rest of their house and that will allow them to basically, you know, continue to live where they've been living for the last 40 years, oh, which yeah. is a good thing. Yeah, that's nice, that's sweet. Mm -hmm. um, I know in Lowell, uh, we don't have that issue and I've seen a lot of the big multi-families uh, turned into like multi-level apartments mm -hmm. where you get like these grand, like you fit your aunts, your uncles, and your grandparents are all in there and they just, after the family's done with it, they get turned into like three, three different apartments, apartment on every floor and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, Lowell's always been a very progressive place. Yeah. Um, and that being said, uh, yes, we are live, live, <laughs> coming from uh, a location in Lowell that we hope to have more meetings here, and uh, I will be reaching out uh, by the end of the week, I hope, if I do the software right, to uh, make meetings happen. Excellent. So, uh, you know, get the whole ball rolling for Mass again, right here in Lowell. So, gentlemen. Thanks, folks. Like, share, subscribe. Check us out at masspirates.org. And have an awesome weekend.